And then ultimately, this would keep continuing to more wins and losses to show your possible likeliness of having your game three. Now, this may look a little bit confusing, and typically you wouldn't list out all of these events um, because you wouldn't need them all. Okay, So this is just an example, or this is game three, I'm sorry. So this is just an example of how you can make a tree diagram. If you notice, these branches just kind of keep flowing and keep going. But for the event of this example, what's the probability that the good guys are going to win all seven games? You want to make sure that the good guys are going to keep winning. So here, I'm going to have the good guys start somewhere. Okay, They play their first game. We know that they're going to win. According to this example, this problem, the probabilities that the good guys are going to win a game is 0.62%. So this win has a percentage or a probability of 0.62. We want this team to then win again, which also has another probability of 0.62. Then you would want them to win again. And you would continue this train or this tree diagram until you would have a total of seven wins. Now, conversely, you would have a loss column too. And this loss column would be 0 0.38. Now, some problems, they may say, um, they may give you a rabbit hole, you can say, of probabilities in which events would have to happen in that order. So in this case, let's say the good guys would have to win their first game, but then lose their second game. And then they're going to come back and then win their next game. So as you see here, if I'm looking at these different probabilities, I would follow the path in which my probabilities were given. And because all of these probabilities are going to happen, these paths are, they, in the word that we're going to be referring to, sequential or in sequence, those would be and, 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 in which case these events have to happen in order. So this and this and this. And therefore, we would multiply those probabilities. Now, if a problem ended up telling you what are the odds in the first three games that the good guys end up losing, losing, and losing? Three, eight. So I'm going to come down here for another loss. So what's the probability that the good guys lose, lose, and lose, or win, lose, and win? Here you see two different paths within this tree diagram. And between the two of these, this would be an or statement because I can go down either path of this tree diagram. If I proceeded down only one path, I would be considering this as a product rule and multiplying those probabilities. But if I'm using two different branches of the tree diagram, I would be adding together those possible outcomes because I can either go down this route or I can go down this route, but I never can do both of them at the same time. So tree diagrams are really helpful when it comes to listing all of your events and looking at the possible outcomes. It makes it really fun to do. Um, I tend to organize mine like this with just using some, some letters and I like to make it nice and big on my paper. Um, but we're going to be able to work through some tree diagrams together as we continue through class this week. Okay. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit, let you take a good overview of those two different methods that we discussed. The third one, the list method we spoke about in class, we'll review that as we need. However, be ready to work on some area models and some tree diagrams tomorrow during class or this week during class. Um, and I will catch you next time.